voilà. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Colin and Greg Live here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. My name is Colin Moriarty. This is Greg Miller. Yeah! God, he is loud and scary. Boom, son. Ooh. Ooh. Too sweet to be sour. Man, you're in good. You're not in good spirits. You're just in weird spirits. I didn't sleep at all last night. I was up to 1:30 making YouTube videos. <laughs> then I went to bed. I had this tickle in my throat. Did the cough rolled around? I'll tell you what three hours of sleep feels like. Feels like a lot of coffee this morning. Feels pretty fucking good. Uh, Colin and Greg Live, of course, is our daily uh, Twitch show right uh, right here. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games every weekday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we talk about all things games and movies and TV nerd culture, basically, as you probably know if you are initiated. If not, and you're joining us for the first time, welcome. And thank you for being here with us. We very much appreciate it. We love you, and thank you for all of your support. Uh, Holy crap, you weren't kidding that you sent me all the links today. Thank you, everyone. Woo! Uh, so, uh, Greg, there's a lot of news to get through. Uh, a couple things, though. Uh, first of all, I had a very uh, exciting uh, conversation building on what we were talking about yesterday with our plans for GDC. Oh! The plans that some it's, might call it's, it's big ambitious. Yeah, I would say they're very ambitious. Um, and I learned Eugene. that a developer uh, that is very near and dear to my project. heart yeah. is going to be and there and wants to do something with us. Here's my question, Eugene when are they going to be there? Uh, I don't know, but well, okay. I'm working at all that, but they will be there. So. Okay. And we will do something with them. Okay, I like that a lot. And, so you uh, want to start the speculation as to what Collins developer friend is going to be. Yeah, I mean, I hope, you know, I hope that, you know, basically what, what, what I really want, Greg, yeah. out of this is that, you know, it's something super, you know? I don't want, I don't want the table when we, when we sit around with them to be too dusty. Yeah. No, uh, the dusty I table us, of Patreon? I want us to, I want us to shoot for the stars with this particular, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. with this particular developer, Greg. Now, here's uh, what I want to yeah. put out there. I, we made a miscalculation. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, of course, understand that we sat around and we talked about the fact of, hey... We're going to go to GDC. Should we do every Some, day? Something is, you opened every, every, th everything on there, which is I a know, huge mistake. I know, I know. Well, now something's playing. No, it's over with. I fixed it. I fixed it while you were talking. Greg. Yeah. No, that doesn't count. Oh, <laughs> does it? Why you, I'm, I'm going to close all the links then. We're going to be mean about it. And then I'll open them as you go. Still got to click around. Uh, here's something we talked about yesterday. We're going to live stream every day from that there GDC. Mm-hmm. What I didn't put together was that GDC, the expo, mm -hmm. starts on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So a lot of developers aren't in on Monday and Tuesday. Mm. I had been wondering why so many developers wanted to book things with us on Wednesday. Now I see why, because they're not here Monday or Tuesday. So now the concern for me is, can we do a Monday and Tuesday show? I'm still going to try, goddammit, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still talking to all these people. We're going to figure it out. But that is the thing you need to know going forward. That the GDC presentations and tracks and whatnots... On Monday and Tuesday. Now, here's the good thing about the Monday and Tuesday mm -hmm. thing. Monday and Tuesday, a lot of indie developers in town, they'd want to come show their games, I'm sure. You yeah. know what I mean? It doesn't have to be big name people. We want to bring all these people to the Patreon offices and show their games here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. It's a, what's unfortunate about your massive blunder that brought us back to the zero days of tech. Massive blunder. Massive blunder. Massive. Massive blunder. That it played audio clapping for two seconds that I heard out of this and stopped. Massive blunder. Greg. You what's can take over about, then. You what's, take what's over what's then. What's about the massive blunder akin to, I don't know, akin to the great military defeats of all time is that... Uh, Two is the record? Is that people might not have heard my uh, particular tease... Um, Colin, it was for, literally clapping nope, for two seconds. No, it wasn't. It was, it was no the president. It, it was the speech. Nope, you messed up. And now what, what's going to happen, Greg, is that, you know, we, we have lost the faith of the people and you just... Destroyed our morale. Yeah, you told us to go take a hill that we had no business taking, and you screwed everything up. And that's basically it. What do we do? How do we rebuild? I don't know. I kind of just want to end the show now. It's all been right. a good show, Greg. All right. Uh, all right. There's a, actually a lot of obviously more financial news coming out. A lot of information today, Greg. I don't know if you saw it about Ubisoft particularly, um, and I'm not sure where to begin. There's a lot of different uh, different kinds of news. I think we're going to start with kind of the more general story about Ubisoft sales. Uh, and uh, Rob Crossley over at GameSpot uh, describes uh, them as dominant during dominant. the quarter. Um, our destiny is in our hands. Um, 
and well, as the quote says, chief executive of reference to Bungie's independence from Activision. Um, Ubisoft enjoyed a surge in sales during the three-month period between October and December 2014, bringing in $924 million in revenue during the quarter, thanks to strong performances from titles such as Assassin's Creed Unity and Far Cry 4. Now, as a quick note, because we talked about Wait it... Wait the notes on me. We talked about it on, nice on the Gamescast. Uh, the, the story went up today, or the video went up today about... Uh, Grand Theft Auto V in particular, Grand Theft Auto V made more money in about a day and a half than all of Ubisoft's games did for three months. But that is an anomaly. That's neither here nor there. It's still very strong, almost a billion dollars in revenue for, uh, for Ubisoft on their games. Uh, the final figure represents a significant 50%, 56% increase in sales compared to last period in 2013 when the company made about $593 million off the backs of Assassin's Creed IV. Uh, boosted further by the release of Watch Dogs in May 2014, Ubisoft managed to bring in about $1.5 billion in sales during the final nine months of 2014. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity and Rogue, Rogue of course is the last gen version, the PS3 and Xbox 360 uh, version of Assassin's Creed, uh, hit about 10 million units combined. Ooh. Far Cry 4 did 7 million and The Crew, which I'm sure was a disappointment for them, did 2 million. Um, Just Dance 4 brought in four, Dance. brought in 4 million units and sold best on Wii, nice. if I remember correctly. Uh, if we remember from the MPD, which I think comes out later today. Uh, digital sales for Ubisoft are strong, with download game revenue climbing 150% during the October to December period, which is awesome. They made $157 million only on digital games. Um, so uh, that's pretty exciting. Now, here's here's big news, and this is kind of where we're, we're venturing off a little bit. Um, first of all, they gave a shout-out to Valiant Hearts and uh, Child of Light in there for them making money. We I'm love Valiant about. Hearts. We hate Child of Light. Overrated garbage game. Um, now, there's a, a few things I think worth noting here, Greg. One of them in particular is that they talk about the Assassin's Creed movie. And I sent you a, a link from The Verge uh, that talks about this. Um, the movie is going to come out in December of 2016, according to Ubisoft. Um, and Channing Tatum will uh, star in the Gambit X-Men film next what? October. So there's two different stories here that I thought we would combine into one, as Verge did, so we can kind of just hit both of these little news stories and get them out of the way, Greg. Gotcha. Because we talk a lot about comics sometimes. Today's not going to be one of those days. We talk a lot about comics sometimes. <laughs> well, we talk a lot about comics sometimes. 90% of the time, this works 50% of the time. <laughs> I think the sentence makes perfect sense. Uh, Did you see somebody yell at us the other day when we were like, uh, we couldn't figure out what half of 70% was? Yeah. He's like, it's 35%. What's wrong with you guys? But do, I look like, do I look like a mathematician? You don't. You look like a writer. Well, That's I the highest compliment I can pay you. Because well, you get the bourbon... You look like Hemingway. You look like you're going to swallow the business end of a shotgun soon. Am I? We have to keep doing this show. Uh, so the story over at The Verge, very briefly, by Josh Lowenson reads, The good news, 20th Century Fox's Assassin's Creed film is back on track for a theatrical release, which I know a lot of people are excited about. The bad news, you're going to have to wait until the end of next year to see it. Aww. Fox said today that the film, based on Ubisoft's popular video game and starring Michael Fassbender will arrive in theaters December 21st, 2016. The film was originally scheduled for August 7th this year, but was pushed back late last year. Alongside the change, Fox dated its new X-Men spinoff, Gambit, which is set for a release October 7th, 2016, while announcing that Channing Tatum will be playing card-shooting mutant Remy LeBeau. Now, I do want to float this out there. Yeah. I love you. Uh -huh. I, there's no technical sign for you. You know this is a January 5th article. It's oh, February. No, they, oh, I, I'm, on the, I'm on the wrong article then. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh dear! It's just I remember when I saw this Channing Tatum thing. I was like, "Wait a second! Assassin's I remember! Creed. I remember him doing this." Hold on, let me find a different link. A sec, because there was news today about it. News. Now nah, who's fucking up, huh? Game Informer. So here we go. I'm sorry. I click. I look for. I saw news. Can today. we just hug it out and start again? No, no. There's no reason to hug. I want to hug. I'm not mad at you. There's no reason. I'm to hug. furious at you though. You just made us read a January 5th news story in this fucking it's breaking not, news show. It's not as bad as when I made us read a year-old story about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What was it? Uh, Arcane's game. It's not a joke. <laughs> hey, guys, breaking news. This might be teased. All right, so I'm looking for game info. So here's the story. And this one's by Jeff Marchiafava. This is, so this is the news. Assassin's Creed movie in production. Okay. This is what they announced. Ubisoft has announced that the much-discussed Assassin's Creed film, according to Game Informer, has finally been greenlit and is now in production. So I guess last month, we learned mm. that who was going to be in it when it was coming out. Yeah. This month we learned that it has been greenlit and going into production. Although you would assume that if they announced the date, it was greenlit a little while ago. You think uh, so? Ubisoft announced a new deal with new a, a deal with new Regency for an Assassin's Creed film back in 2012, which included Michael Fassbender, which we just talked about. Blah, blah, blah. Today, during Ubisoft's third quarter fiscal earnings call, the publisher offered an update announcing that the film has officially been greenlit and is now in production. So I don't know, I, and I'm kind of curious what the nature of. Uh, this Assassin's Creed movie is, and if people are excited about it out there, because... Twitch, chat, 
Are you excited? We will throw up a poll right now for you as well, but let us know just by talking. Are you excited about this Assassin's Creed movie? Yeah, because like I don't. Again, this is a, we we we. I don't want to spoil the the games cast for for next week or for later today. If you're a Patreon subscriber, you're going to get access obviously earlier to the games cast. We were talking about the Zelda movie and specifically, or the Zelda TV show that, or the Zelda series that's going to be on Netflix. Not it's yeah. neither a movie nor a TV show. Um, and what is the nature of the story going to be? And where are they going to draw from? And what is it going to be? With Assassin's Creed, the story is pretty established and I think somewhat linear throughout yeah. time. And I wonder Lots how you, uses. I wonder how you, I wonder how you tell it. You know, yeah. I'm interested in how you tell this particular uh, this particular story. Okay. Um, do you think I mean, maybe they just fit it in maybe they don't have to retell everything maybe it's not Desmond maybe it's you know just a standalone it could a be. new assassin in the series it could be mm. uh, but I hope not I mean I, I, it would be cool for them to I think the story in Assassin's Creed is actually really cool it's, yeah. it's just too bad the game you don't like the gameplay of it isn't as good as the story um, Greg I think there might be more used stuff news specifically I sent you and this is an interesting thing and, and something I want to talk to the, the people out there about uh Zorin Tay over at uh, GameSpot wrote uh, something about Ubisoft's Axe the Wii U game. Um, and it's called Know Your Friends. Know Your Friends. You and I know each other. Yeah. We can play this game. We'd be good at it. Um, and I saw this What's story today. Like? Nothing. I thought this was pretty interesting. Not because the game wasn't released. A lot of games get somewhere through production and get canceled. Through yeah. production Or get canceled somewhere along the way. Um, but this story by Zarin, um, that's via Polygon, says, More information on Ubisoft's unrele uh, unreleased completed Wii U game has been revealed um, for uh, by the Unseen 64 podcast. And we, of course, we've given out a shout-out to Unseen 64, which is a great website people should go to if they haven't heard about it. Um, Unseen 64 basically chronicles games that were canceled. Or, you know, they release uh, pre-production art and all sorts of things. Uh, a really, really fascinating website. Zyger knows why this game got canceled. He says, No, my friends, what if I have none? <laughs> Uh, that's a good, that's a bad joke. The game that's is a great joke! The game is described by Nintendo World Report as a multiplayer quirky party quiz game which uses the Wii U gamepad in interesting ways, mostly playing on social interactions. And example cited, uh, questions cited by Unseen64 asked each player to list their competitors on the touchscreen in order of those who are more likely to invite friends over for dinner. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example of you doing a game. Um, so, and this game actually had a ESRB rating and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, I thought that this was interesting because, um, it seems that Ubisoft held it because Wii U just wasn't selling enough. And that's what's most interesting. It says, speaking in an interview during E3 last year, um, the head of Ubisoft uh, described the game as, quote, having been done for six months. It's on the shelf waiting for more families to have the console. End quote. Um, so it says something about Wii U's install base or lack thereof that Ubisoft won't even spend the money to release the game after sure. having already made the game. Um, and I don't think you see that very often at all. This, I mean, this is a glare, uh, pretty obvious example of the problem Nintendo has faced for a long, long time, both with the U or with the Wii U, but also for the Wii, and then especially with the GameCube and everything else. Third-party relations, mm. getting getting third parties to come make games to your console and have them be excited. Mm. Thanks for the sub, Mag. Mm. Uh, you figure we we buy the Wii mm. because we want the exclusives. We want Zelda. We want Mario. We want awesome games like Smash Brothers. But then you get down to this, like, what? what, what nobody's going to buy this Ubisoft game. Why should they even bother putting it out? It's interesting that they... Why should they even bother making it is the bigger question. Well, you figure they take the... You have, that's a risk you start in the beginning, right? You, you jump out there and you go, okay, new Nintendo console coming out. We sold really, really well. We have to make something for it, right? Let's see how it goes. You start making a game and it doesn't come together. You're like, well... Or the game comes together fine, but you're like, it doesn't sell. Like That's, that's a very, very fascinating cost-benefit analysis is what I'm saying. Props to uh, Unseen64, of course, for doing great Perhaps, work. Dougie. Uh, woof, woof. Really fascinating stuff. Greg. Yeah. Uh, there's just a couple more Ubisoft uh, things to touch on um, from uh, their conference call, their financial earnings call. And I think this is probably the most uh, salient information, most important information. For our people? Uh, just for everyone generally. Okay. Is that uh, this from comes, comes from Seth Macy at IGN. Uh, he writes that during a conference call with investors today, Ubisoft reconfirmed that a new Assassin's Creed, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, and The Division will be coming out this year. No shit, really. Um, and it says, uh, and and the quote um, from Yves Guillemot, the CEO of... Can we give him a round of applause? That was some fucking pronunciation. Yeah. Do it again. Yves Guillemot. Yeah, Guillemot. Oh, Yves, Yves Guillemot. Oh. <laughs> um, I used to love the word, uh, the name Eve. Or Eves, depending on how you want to say it. Y-V-E-S. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you smelled like Eve, like Eve Valkyrie. Uh, great, great name. Um, but he says, um, or said in the con in the uh, the call, uh, the strong install base for the Xbox One and PS4 should offer a nice tailwind, and we expect software growth to come back. 
Um, and he basically goes on to add, according to Seth Macy at IGN, that the company is benefiting from its early investment in new IP for the current gen systems. The company hopes to continue benefiting, quote, with the introduction of the division, which I, I suspect, I really am excited about the division. You know, I think that game looks really cool. I, I am dubious. Uh, I have dubious expectations that it's going to work, considering yesterday I put on Tetris Ultimate yesterday, which came out two and a half months ago, and it still doesn't fucking work on PS4. So way to go with that, Ubisoft. Very well done. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but uh, so. Just some confirmation that these games are apparently coming. Uh, Do you believe it? It's confirmation that they're projected, that they're saying, that they're planning. Do these games come out? Well, Does Rainbow Six the Siege and Tom Clancy's Div Division come out this year? Uh, presumably. I think you get... Two Not out, presumably, two damn out, it, Colin. Promote. Two out of predict. Three, two out of three, I think, will... I mean, Assassin's Creed, I'm sure, is a lot. Assassin's Creed is that, gonna come that out one, hell or high water. That one that was leaked by Kotaku looks pretty cool. Uh, looks like 19th century England, right? Oh, is it like, Victory or something? Assassin's Creed Victory? Yeah, Assassin's where he's on this... Yeah, yeah, I know that one. Uh, I think Rainbow Six is probably the most unlikely of those three to come yeah, out. That's the one I want the most. Um, and then Division, I mean, you know, who knows? Will so, you play Rainbow Six with me? It'll be like Left 4 Dead. It'll I be really, like, you, you like the New Vegas. I did, yeah, I liked New Vegas, and I, I don't think the games are going to be very similar. Rainbow Six New Vegas. Uh, but Rainbow Six 3 on um, Xbox, the original Xbox, was one of my favorite online games. I played that game for hundreds of hours online. So yeah. it's entirely possible that you know I jump in. We'll okay, see. play with me. Come on. We'll get Nick in there. We'll shoot. Sh we'll shotgun through the walls. Greg, we'll see what happens. Did you see that you can shoot through the walls? Greg, we're going to I don't see know if you saw the presentation at E3. Greg. Through the walls. We're going to see what happens. We'll like on Bravo? We're gonna Watch what happens next. Exactly. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Um... MCV had some interesting information today, Greg, about Sega's financials. MCV, you say? Not quite as strong as, uh, as Ubisoft as you might expect. Because they're waiting on them uh, Persona games. Um, yeah, they will benefit from that. Um, ben Parfit at uh, MCV wrote, Sonic Boom fails to sell 500000 as Sega sales and income fall. Nintendo titles Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric, and Sonic Boom, Shatter Crystal have so far sold just 490,000 units between them. Shocking. Add to that declines in sales of both PC Staple Football Manager and both Wii U and 3DS titles and Sega Sammy's financials for the nine months ending December saw a 12% drop in net sales, 65% drop in operating income, and 24% decline in net income, according Damn. to the story. The numbers also come despite a 21% increase in development spend and a 56% bump to advertise out, advertising outlay uh, in its customer in consumer division. So they're spending more on developing and in advertising their games. Bad, bad mix. Bad mojo. Uh, Alien Isolation was the star performer with 1.76 million sales. It's not clear whether this means sold to retail or sold to consumers, although the former seems likely as Creative Assembly confirmed 1 million sales to consumers just last month. Um, so what they're saying is that that might not be sold to consumers. Uh, less promising are the numbers for Football Manager, however. The latest installment has so far sold 640,000 units, leaving it only a quarter to try to catch up to the 790,000 sold by Football Manager 2014. Or the 940,000 sales posted by Fo Football Manager 2013 in Sega's full year reports. Predicted sales of Wii U software have also been revised downward from 600,000 units to just 300,000, so in half. And 3DS was cut from 2002, so 2.2 million to 1.38 million. Xbox One game sales forecasts were also cut from 440,000 to 340,000, although the PS4 estimate jumped from 690 to 760,000. Okay. Um, so Sonic Boom, uh, so it, I don't think it, uh, yeah. Malachis so, in, the, in the comments says, more like Sonic Kaboom, uh, am I right? Uh, Good one, Malachis. Now, Greg, this segues to an interesting article that, uh, that our friend Alexa uh, from oh. GameSpot tweeted out today, and this is from The Verge. Um, it's called TLDR, Sonic the Hedgehog Needs to Die. Damn. And, Truth. Uh, yeah, and, I think, Truth and obviously I've been saying this for a long time. The uh, article, it's somewhat brief, is by Andrew Webster over at The Verge. Um, and he has some interesting things to say, and I wanted to bring this up to people. Um, and it, the way he begins the article, I think, is quite apt. Okay. He says, sometimes it's better to pull the plug than watch someone die a slow, agonizing death. It's hard on everyone, painful for the victim and heartbreaking for those around them. Nobody wants to see someone they care about fade away in an endless, degrading, excruciating fashion. That's exactly what's happened to Sonic the Hedgehog, who continues to star in video games despite the fact that they're all awful and nobody cares. <laughs> Sega is being cruel. Sonic needs to die. And I think that is pretty apt. He says, who continues to star in video games despite the fact that they're all awful and nobody cares. Yep. And that's what I've been saying for years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand how they keep making these games and, like, what they're thinking. One of the crazy things about it, I think... The 3DS one, I think that's Shattered Crystal, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'm wrong. That was created by um, by uh, Sanzaru, the guys that did Sly oh, yeah, 4. Yeah. Didn't turn out well for them. Surpri and that surprised me, because those guys are very talented. Yeah. They did a great job with Sly. Yeah. Um, but the story later goes on to say, Rise of Lyric, for instance, currently has a score of 32 on Metacritic. Damn. 
The 3DS version is so bad that Sonic fans have, given, have taken to giving the game a 10 out of 10 user reviews in an attempt to outweigh all the negative critical feedback. Well, that's just uh, every game. Yeah, that's you true. You give a game 9.8, they're going to say they're going to come in and give it a 10, and then somebody's going to give it a zero. That's true. I mean, it's it's an interesting article. I, I, I suggest people go and look it up and read it. Um, and uh, I'll drop it in the chat for he you. He says something about uh, Nintendo that I think is apt, because people sometimes compare Nintendo doing kind of the similar thing to you know, tomorrow, for instance. That's that. fucking bullshit. And what he, what he says, and I think it's apt, is people like to deride Nintendo for relying heavily on its big-name franchises. And it's true, they do that. Right. Sure. But what he says is when a new Nintendo console comes out, you know you'll be playing Super Mario and The Legend of Zelda before long. But unlike Sega, Nintendo gets away with returning to the same well because it still treats its franchises with respect. The most recent Mario game is up there with the best, and the Wii U version of Zelda has me more excited than just about any other game this year. Sega, meanwhile, once made a Sonic spin-off where their characters had guns. Sonic's long, slow, sad decline is akin to a great athlete that just doesn't know when to retire. It's hard to remember how great he once was when so much time has passed, and I have a hard time imagining what could be done to make the Sonic name relevant again. Unlike Mario, Sonic is a product of his time. A quintessentially 90s personality that just hasn't been able to figure out his place in the modern world. I don't think he ever will. He also still exists in other formats, including a cartoon series and some comics. But really, we need to end it all. Maybe once eno enough time has passed and we've all dreamed for him, we can consider the notion of reboot. I totally agree. I agree exa exactly what he's saying. Sonic has no... It's like Crash Bandicoot. When everyone asks for Crash Bandicoot, it's like Crash Bandicoot doesn't fit anymore. The good news is that Crash Bandicoot has been dead for so long that you can now revive him because now there is a nostalgia for Crash Bandicoot. There's not enough time for a nostalgia for Sonic because they won't let it go. You know what I mean? And what I'm interested to see is now that they're losing money and hemorrhaging money, and Sonic has combined on Wii U and 3DS sold fewer than 500,000 copies, which is abysmal. You know, what do you do from there? Yeah. And, and to me, it's like, leave it alone. Just stop. You know what I mean? Stop. Right, 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 right. So I want, you know, so props to The Verge and props to uh, Andrew Webster over there for a really nice uh, article. Uh, I've opened it. a new poll if Sonic should be killed or if he should be revived. Also, nobody wants the Assassin's Creed movie. Shocking. N nobody. I'm shocking. Out of our, and this is, of course, scientific poll. You can take that to the bank. Everybody understands it. All right. Gregory? Yeah. Next story. What up, bro? Two stories about Housemark that I want to touch on. Oh, Housemark. Some people were a little upset that I didn't touch on one of these stories yesterday, so let's st start with that first. Uh, Polygon talked about uh, something that was announced on the PlayStation blog yesterday, uh, that Resogun, PlayStation 4's best game, it keeps growing. After on, DC Universe Online. Uh, Resogun keeps gr uh, according to Michael McWhorter over there at Polygon, Resogun keeps growing on PS4 with new challengers and defenders updates. Um, and he writes, in short, uh, PlayStation 4 shoot-em-up Resogun will get a new expansion, Resogun Defenders, next week. Developer Housemark and Sony XDev mm, confirmed mm. today, so that's yesterday. The expansion will introduce two new game modes, Protector and Commando. Protector is described as a defense of one of the last remaining human colonies. It includes a handful of new power-ups, including a super boost and teleport move. Players will need to rescue humans and deliver them to the city's stronghold. It looks more in line with standard Resogun gameplay than Resogun Defender's other new mode. Commando is something like Resogun's take on Missile Command. And that sounds really interesting to me. Players assume control of a lone human instead of a ship who must fend off waves of enemies and objects that fall from the sky. Players can equip their human with bandanas that grant some attack modifiers and upgrade them comparatively weak gun by gathering power-ups, etc. It'll cost $4.99 to upgrade the game unless you have the... Um, uh, it's also part of the season pass. So February 17th, that launches. You excited? Uh, You're Mr. Resogun. I'm super stoked. I mean, anything they can do to Resogun is good news to me. Uh, Housemark, it says also the Housemark is also releasing a new update for Resogun called Resogun Challengers. It's free Challenges. and adds a fresh batch of challenges and feats to the game, giving players new reasons to return to the game. Um, and that update apparently is already live, although I have, n I have not downloaded it yet. Apparently it also has new trophies. Mm. Um, mm. Now there's more interesting news here, Greg. About the Resogun? Yeah, about Housemark and what they're doing next. Oh. Um, today uh, on YouTube, they announced, uh, they posted a video. Yeah. And you recognize this guy, it's our friend Michael. We know uh, him over well. Over at, uh, at Housemark, who's, you know, I talk to him quite often. Um, and basically what they announced here in this video is that they're making a game with Eugene Jarvis. You know who Eugene Jarvis is, Greg, He's the voice of Jarvis in the Avengers flicks and the that's Iron that's Man. exactly right. That's exactly who he is. Eugene Jarvis is an OG, OG, OG game developer. Super important. Okay. He made, among other games, Defender. Defender influenced Resogun. Now, I'm interested mm. in what they're going to do. So, he made Defender, Stargate, Robotron, Smash TV, like, a lot of different games. And yeah. they're collaborating. Housemark is collaborating with him to make a game. This is huge news. Um, and I'm, like, I'm really excited to see, like, what they're going to do. Because it seems like Jarvis has been somewhat dormant um, for a He's while. He's been lying in wait like Godzilla um, for when the people needed him most. So, I just wanted to throw that out there. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I'm, and I'm super interested. I'm sure that they've probably found each other. Um, 
when Resogun came out and it was so clearly inspired by And he Defender. came with legal action. Exactly. He's like, guess what, guys? This is what's going to happen. Uh, Colin, a whole bunch of people want Sonic to die. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's. Uh, I like how there's 2.2% invalid vote. They just put in some, some jibber-jabber. They probably said, put him in purgatory. Let him go over there. It's just... Sonic's a perfect example of running your, your franchise into the ground. Just not... Um, how many bad games you can make before nobody cares. What's Sega's... What's going to happen to Sega? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think... You know, so... They're an interesting company in the sense that they own... The company that owns them owns Sammy, too. And, and so they... Sammy. So they... Apparently... You know, if you go to... You know, in Japan... I've never been to these particular bars when I've been in Japan. But you can play a lot of, like, different kind of arcade games that aren't video games, really. But they're, like, kind of, like, different kinds of games. Uh, like, maybe gambling games or something like that. Like, I'm not really... Pachinko? Quite, yeah, like, things like that. But, like... Anyway, Sammy has a, a kind of a more concrete business with that kind of thing. As far as I remember, that kind of sustains the operation or okay. helps contribute to the financials of the operation. And let's not forget that they also bought Atlas. Um, so, and they let Atlas basically just do their thing. Which is the right thing to do. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen to Sega. Although I think that when I think about the IP they have, they just don't, they just don't own anything other than... Like Fantasy Star, Valkyria Chronicles, Valkyria Chronicles, but Fantasy Star. I, you're talking about games that make money. I understand. Yeah, like you know, make Fantasy Star five already. It's been twenty years. Get off your ass, Greg. This is really essential news. Okay. Um, Do I they announced this on the PlayStation forums, and I have no idea why they did this, but this is this go is, to your people, man. This is huge news. Um, we can change our names. No, but I think that this suggests that we might be close. What? Oh. You can now upgrade oh. your sub account to a master account. Oh. Oh, this, this helps this out a lot of people. This is years and years and years and years in the making, Greg, on nice. PlayStation Network. Nice, um, The story was posted here, and it says, I'm happy to announce the introduction of a long-requested feature to your PlayStation experience. SEN sub-account holders who are over 18 can now upgrade their existing account to a master account. Mm. Upgrading to a master account will allow you to full access to the full <laughs> range of online and account, blah, blah, blah. You'll get your friends list, your trophies, all that will be drawn over. Awesome. This is huge news because people that were honest, as they should have been when they made their account and say they were 14, Ooh. made a sub-account and they can never do anything about it. If you have a sub-account, you can't even Twitch stream on PlayStation 4. You like Shoot, hey. There's all sorts of crazy shit you can't do with the accounts and people are furious about this for a long time. With yeah. the, except with like... With the deletion of trophies you don't want, or 0% trophies, and with the name changing, this was the third leg of that stool, and they knocked one of them out. Nice. So, this gives me, as I tweeted before, um, an hour or two ago, this gives me hope that they are, they've always been listening, but give me hope that they're figuring it out. This was obviously a technical hurdle that they had to overcome. Yeah. Um, so, they did it. And so, if you have uh, a sub-account, like Mike Mitchell, our good friend and old roommate Mike did Mitchell, Did he have a sub-account? Sub what the fuck's his problem? You can now roll that into a master account. And it'll everything will be just fine. Everything's gone. And I've always and I've always felt really bad about people that made sub accounts and were just locked to them forever. You know, like it didn't like they never they never they never took into account that the fourteen year old or the fifteen year old or the sixteen year old that made the sub account is now so, at some point going to be an adult. So walk me through it a little bit. I never, I understood, obviously, you know, you, people would write into Beyond, they would talk to us at shows, they would do all these things, that the, it was their dad's PlayStation 4, they made a sub-account on it. Is a sub-account strictly based on your age, or what? what is the defining factor of a sub-account? I it think it is the age, or if you make an account underneath the master account on the same console, as far as I understand. So I just, I, it's one of those I've never seen it pop up as an option. You know, when I make when I go into make a, when I'm like when I make when I make Game Over Greggy on any of my new consoles, or even when you'd come and recover yours, or Christine recovers her profile on my PS4 or PS3, right? I never saw it pop up and be like, "Is this a sub account?" I just never understood. Comments, let me know if it's just age, if there's something, how it all works out, how this all goes down. But it's exciting that it's dead. It's fascinating for me that you never sat that this was built in a time when you didn't think about. It makes sense, I guess. You, you, when PlayStation Network shows up for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. It's doing its thing, being a, being a bro, bouncing around. You don't understand the fact that this is the first online console. PlayStation Network is going to be with you forever now, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't mean you as a fan making the stupid name about Tingle Tangle Balls. I mean Sony making this network, mm -hmm. not understanding that it's going to go on and on and on mm -hmm. and pro pro proliferate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's dependent on breast size, says uh, Veritas. I don't think that's true. 
happens uh, at the date of birth stage. So yeah, it's all about your date. Just your age. Enter anything below. It forces you into a sub account. Thank you, Curse on Robot. This is breaking news. Uh, breaking news. Email from Idea Factory. Not huge news, but I mean, this is brand new. It's just Still fresh breaking. Off, fresh off the presses. Fresh off the... Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 3 V-Generation will be hitting North America and Europe summer 2015 exclusively on PlayStation Vita. Um, so it'll be coming west uh, via Idea Factory. Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 and 2 must have been selling pretty well for them to mm, announce mm, this. Mm, mm. This is another example of Vita finding its niche. Um, the pe people there are, are buying these games. Um, yeah. So Idea Factory is bringing the third one over. Um, which is pretty exciting. So that's just a little bit of breaking news for you. I'm glad uh, you did that, Colin. I like the breaking news. Greg? Yeah. Something interesting happened yesterday for a show that we hold near and dear to our hearts, House of Cards. Uh, House of Cards, of course, is based on an old British series that has been revived and made new again um, instead of taking place, of course, in the British government, taking place in the American government. Or Kevin the Spacey. best government on earth. Kevin Spacey is the star. It's a great show. The third se It's obviously exclusive to Netflix. The third season starts in a couple weeks. But according to Ross Miller at The Verge, and I saw this popping up all over Twitter yesterday, House of Cards Season 3 temporarily showed up on Netflix Damn. weeks early and then was taken down. The story reads, um, Oops, looks like you can go to Netflix and watch Season 3 of House of Cards. Trust us that we're watching it right now. The season isn't supposed to premiere until February 27th, but the first 10 episodes are here, titled Chapters 27 through 36. Seeing as we're missing the full 13-episode run, we're guessing this is more of an accident. And then they updated and they said, and it's gone. If you open the page, don't hit refresh. Trust us. According to a statement from Netflix, those early teases were caused by a bug in the system. Um, I saw some interesting... Uh, don't God. scroll down anymore. Don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spoilers. Uh, yeah. If you... if Because you, they had just the, the, the summations of all okay, the... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, I'm very happy um, you did that to me. Now, some people had something interesting to say about this. Yeah. That this might have been intentional. And I wonder if... Like, as a marketing ploy... Because now, like, House of Cards is, like, all the talk. Make... And I'm like... But people already talk about House of Cards. Yeah, but my... my I, I, it's not that... It's not that far-fetched far, flung, or far -fetched for me. It's like, how does that accidentally happen? How the fuck does that accidentally happen? Yeah. How do you just accidentally upload the movie? Like, I'm sure they're uploaded somewhere, but how do they accidentally just show up? Pop them live, the first ten by accident, yeah. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. So, I think that it's possible, probably unlikely, but possible. Not beyond... Uh, we, we don't, we gotta stop doing that. That's why I whispered it. Oh, okay. I owe, I owe Pear Schneider a nickel now. I know. We're gonna be poor if you keep doing that, Greg. We already are. Um, so, yeah, I think that that was probably unlikely, but not beyond the realm of possibility. Don't fucking do it, Greg. Don't do it. Oh, that hurt. It's like holding in a sneeze. Greg, do you like James Bond? Nope. I don't either. <laughs> Nick Scarpino does, and millions of people around the world do. And Polygon's Dave Tack wrote about uh, your, you're getting your first look at James Bond Inspector. James Bond, armed, serious, and dressed in black, according to the story, stands in stark Get contrast the to the white mountains that surround him in the first image released from Spectre, the upcoming cool. 24th installment in the film series. The still frame of actor Daniel Craig, who manages to look cool in glasses nobody has business wearing, shows a sliver of Bond in, action, in an action sequence. If you scroll down, you'll see a little bit of video. Oh. Um, and it's uh, not too, too long. It's basically just a behind-the-scenes look. We know they're using cameras, practical effects in the mountains. This lady's there. Say her name. Madeline Swan. No. Uh, Leia Sadu. Damn, you're, you're turning me on with all this French talk. Say this French name. Over here. This one. <laughs> Peter Molyneux. Oh, my God. Peter Molyneux. I'm getting the tingle balls now. <clears throat> um, so, anyway, just a little look. I mean, I know, you know people love Bond. Oh, no, um, that, that car's driving away fast. Why? Why don't you like James Bond? I think it's fine. It's just like it's not. It's not. I don't. I'm not into it. Yeah. You know, like I'm not gonna pretend I'm into Bond. I'm not. You know, I like. I remember um, when Pierce Brosnan was Bond. I liked those movies and the game on N64. Oh, who didn't like, like the game? The game. I can put aside my not liking Bond. Like those fine. But uh, no, it's not really something I'm super into. Has Nick Scarpino commented on these shots yet? Yeah, I think he he saw it this morning. As far as I understand. Nick, what do you think of these Spectre shots? Awesome, says Nick. Another insightful commentary from Nick Scarpino. It's fine. It's Spectre. It's Spectre. Uh, why do you like Bond? Why do I like Bond? Yeah. Talking about Nick. Do I need a microphone? I don't know. Are you, you going to go that long? Probably. It's Bond. All right. We'll, just, uh, we'll awkwardly look at you while you get a microphone. Awkwardly look at me while I get a microphone. It's fine. Microphone. Daniel Craig is fine. You're fine. Everybody's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Colin. You got the bond. I don't do a good walk-in. I don't know why. But you, your walk-in inspires me to do a walk-in. That's how it starts. Yeah? Yeah. How long did you work 
how long did you workshop your walk-in before you got it going? I really don't workshop the walk-in. The walk-in is... Workshops you? The walk-in actually started with my brother. He loves walk-in. He used to be a big fan of when Jay Moore and Kevin Pollock would do walk-in. Yeah. So he does it all the time. And Matt Scarpino's walk-in is hilarious. Okay. Come on and sit in and tell us some stuff. Okay. Uh, here's the reason why I like walk-in. You're a silly. You don't know how to do this. Oh, sorry. There you, there you go. go. Here's the re my on one. Yep. Check, check, check. Okay. Here's the reason why I like Bond. Um, right now you're just a shadow. You need to come in here. Sit, sit, come in here and crouch. Okay. But, and I, th I think we are lopsided still. We probably are. I didn't balance the camera. There you go. All right. I'll do that in a second. All right. Now, now, now tell us why there's a... Whoa. What happened to the web browser? There it is. Tell me why this guy gets you excited. Bond is awesome. Mostly because he's been around in the public for so long, right? Like we've been, we've been seeing Bond movies since... God, the 60s, when they first started making with Doctor, when they came out with Doctor No. It's one of the longest running series, actually probably is the longest running movie history, uh, series in the history of movies. Um, and it really is, if you go back, it's a sign of the, of the times. So you go back and you watch those early Bond films, and it is hilarious to see sort of the differences between that Bond and our Bond now. Um, I think they made a bit of a misstep along the way of Quantum of Solace and Skyfall. Hopefully this brings it back to the Did you like Skyfall? I didn't particularly care for Skyfall because it was more of a, a, a return to kind of the bond of um, we saw with Roger Moore or, you know, a little bit of the 80s because it was a little bit of ridiculousness in it. We had the car that all of a sudden had guns and we didn't really explain why that came from. And it, it just didn't really work for me. I know everyone loves it and it did well. It did a lot better than Quantum of Solace in the box office. Um, what I'm excited about here, though, is... This looks a lot like, uh, you know, Her Majesty's Secret Service or any of the Bond movies that, that were filmed sort of in the Alps, you know, where he's skiing and he's doing all this cool stuff. Uh, and I just love Daniel Craig. I think he's going to, you know, he's been kind of floating around as maybe not wanting to be a part of the series anymore and then coming back in. I think he's contracted for seven movies. we got Dave Batista. Yeah, Batista. Uh, is, Batista bomb. He's playing a character, I think, called Mr. Uh, Jinx or Kinks, something like that. It was that. Kinks, I Kinks, yeah. Um, he's, the, he's the Fifty Shades of Grey inspired character. Yeah, and he's, he's having gonna a, tie up Bond. He's having a lot of fun, and you know, just ultimately, like James Bond is is such a cool character because at his base, he's flawed, and you don't really see it too much in the movies. But if you read the original books, I mean, he's really kind of a depressed sort of loner, and a lot of the reason why he is Bond is he created that for himself as a way as, uh, of sort of surviving and being okay with the things that he has to do on a daily basis. And so I think there's a lot of ways you can empathize with a guy like that. Plus, we all kind of want to just be James Bond. Let's be honest; like we all want to be you know, gallivanting around the world and being a spy and being able to, you know, get with incredibly good-looking women and wear awesome suits and drive an Aston Martin. And there is sort of a, a level of, um, I guess, sort of glorification that you have with the Bond series. Plus, you know, recently they've been really awesome action films, which is cool. Final question before we let you go. Sure. Do you think there, are, there will ever be a female Bond? No, probably not. But I do, I'm really excited. Why that. are you sexist? Why am I sexist? Well, there could be. No, no, you already said no. It's too late. We I just, I don't. I, it's so much of the Bond franchise is built on that sort of macho masculinity that it sure. would be, it would be a hard press. I think what we're going to see first is I think we're going to see a black Bond. I think we're going to see Idris Elba come in as James Bond. Are you? Why didn't that happen already? There was talk about it him coming in for this one. I think there was talk about it. Well, Daniel Craig is contracted to do I think seven of these. And I Jesus think that they were, Christ! I think that they were talking about potentially doing that if he pulled out of uh, Spectre. Okay. Um, the other cool thing I do like is that they are bringing back Spectre, which is a, uh, another return to sort of the old school form where Spectre, Spectre was always the organization that was the secret organization. They were the Dr. Claw. That was the number one, number two, number three, Claw. Uh, yes, no, Mr. Okay. Bond, I expect you to die. Like, okay. The, okay. all those guys worked for Spectre. And it was interesting because when they brought back when they did C Casino Royale, instead of Spectre, we had Quantum, yeah. which was the the sort of Spectre-like organization. Gotcha. Now, I don't know where it's going here. If you read this article, they talked a little bit about some a message coming from Bond's past, and like he has to go after and figure out what Spectre is. Maybe mm. it's the guy that he never caught from Quantum, gotcha. um, who has started this other organization. We okay. don't know. But it's really cool. It's really cool to see that old school. And Spectre is, if, I'll give anyone a, a donut if they can tell me what the acronym Spectre stands for. Special people enter. Yeah, your, your way off. Condoms together. Rectum energy. <laughs> Nailed it. So close. <laughs> Nailed it. So close. Anyway. Uh, all right. Get up. Fix the camera. We Bye. love you. Um, also, I don't know if you ever use this. Kawaii, Kawaii Summit here says, uh, just in the nick of time. Wow. Do you ever use that? No, I've never used that You should totally before. start using that. I will from now on. All right. Good. Colin. Yes. Thank you for the, the Bond diatribe. I, I didn't do we, it. You don't thank me for it. When we have an expert in the house, I like using the experts. I don't know why you're telling me that. I don't care. I'm just telling you how the show works. Your show. That you invented. I didn't invent it. I really it. like your hair. Thanks. It's it's like comforting. Does Cheryl touch it a lot? No. Do you? No. Because you know like when I like when I'm working, I'm always running my hands through my hair. But your hair is all like brillowy and pillowy. You got like the Corey Matthews hair. Yeah, it is it is very brillowy, that's true. 
Sorry, I was just reading some stuff while you Love guys were going on that. I wasn't actually listening. No, that's fine. Do you, uh, what, what else do we have to add? We don't like Bond. Bond sucks. Cancel it. Make it a female. Anna Kendrick. There you go. That's what I want. Uh, Produce it! Anna Kendrick is Bond. Anna Kendrick is Bond, everybody. Get it trending along with Smash the Dunst. <laughs> Please don't get that <laughs> trending. <laughs> Uh, a few more pieces of news to get through, Greg. Yeah. Um, I don't know where to go next. These are all kind of interesting stories. I'll start with Dying Light. Okay. Uh, VG247 has a story written by Brenna Hillier. She writes, Dying Light hard mode coming soon for free. <gasps> Dying Light will be supported by DLC, but Techland will also implement a hard mode and a collection of skins at no cost to the player. The Dying Light Twitter account... Uh, the t Dying Light at Twitter announced the free content saying it is the first of many such editions, but didn't give a release date. Um, according to GameSpot, in hard mode, nighttime scenarios will be more difficult, resources will be more scarce, stealth will be more, will be required, and enemies will be more vicious. Um, so, just, just, you know, we, we seem to quite have an affinity for Dying Light. We do, we're big Dying Light and, uh, fans here. So, uh, that, that's coming soon. What's interesting about this is, wasn't it just last week on the show, we were talking about the fact that they added, in, that they, people, people were modding it, or put up an article about how to make Dying Light harder, right? Yes. And so this is the, the developer, Techland, responding, being like, alright, cool, you want that, here you go. That's yeah. awesome. That's what I love about our day and age con. You put out, people give the updates and the DLC a bad name, right? Mm -hmm. Just like love. People, though, they can put out their games, and then they can react to what the audience wants and make stuff they want and continue to keep them engaged. Maybe they'll fix the uh, trophies. That'd be nice. Nope. Hard mode only. Um, Eddie. W w Eddie. At GameSpot wouldn't be a story without Eddie. It says, Mass Effect 4 getting real. Damn. Of course, may have multiplayer. Upcoming Wait, game what? to have no, multiplayer connected nope. experiences. Nope. Stop. What? I liked it at first when it was just... I liked it when it was just... It's coming. I don't know why the web browser is broken today. I liked it when it was coming. I did not like it when it was... It may have multiplayer. We can just stop talking right there. Well, multiplayer is in Mass Effect 3 too. So what, is, what does it mean? Off. Upcoming game to have multiplayer connected experiences, according to recently discovered job ad. Eddie's story reads, Bioware's upcoming Untitled Mass Effect game, the fourth in the main series, will feature some form of online multiplayer, according to recently discovered job advertisement. This Bioware Montreal job requisition for an online producer specifically mentions that a successful candidate will, quote, create and champion the vision of the multiplayer, connected experience, and online features of the game. <coughs> that the next, uh, that's the end quote. That the next Mass Effect will have some sort of multiplayer support is not that much of a surprise. Previous entries in the series also had multiplayer modes, and Bioware's own prior comments about the new Mass Effect game have suggested it would have online support. Meanwhile, Mass Effect senior developer, uh, development director Chris Wynn teases that the upcoming game is, quote, getting real. And he tweeted out, things are getting real now, and I need an excellent producer to come shape online for the next Mass Effect. So he's pointed to that job uh, posting. So, that's basically it. So, just, uh, I, I love Mass Effect. You love Mass Effect. I think that it's uh, exciting that this game is becoming a thing. Um, we were talking, kind of making fun of EA for teasing it. Um, they teased it at E3 last I year. I still think that was and a cool... If you have Greg, to do a presentation. They were, Greg, they teased it, and the game is now getting real. Which, like... I'm not saying... Come on, guys. I wanted it. I'm saying I like that they didn't just have a bullshit press conference with a bullshit teaser and then never talk about it. They came out and they were honest. We talk about honesty getting us places. Talk about honesty getting Shuhei Yoshida places. EA's trying to be a little bit honest. That's all I'm saying. Whatever. Don't touch my hair, Greg. Why? Why are you getting like this now? Watch. <laughs> I'm giving you the energy. You're a really interesting young man, aren't you? <laughs> Ain't it cool? News has a has a picture of uh, Deadpool's outfit. No, they um, do not. But it's uh, just basically a little bit of his eyeball there. Oh, okay. uh, and it says Ryan Reynolds has tweeted a glimpse of his currently in development Deadpool outfit. The story's by Merrick over at Ain't Cool, um, and it's basically just a picture of the tweet from Ryan Reynolds. And you can kind of see. His eye there and some gloves yeah, yeah. on the tail. Nothing too much, but I know people are excited about Deadpool. Um, the Deadpool fl film, according to the story, is uh, going to come out February 2016. Um, so, just wanted to throw that out there, as I know there are some Deadpool fans um, in the crowd. I like the Deadpool. I like the Deadpool character. I'm excited for this movie. It is... I need the chat to tell me, because we're going to move on to another story, and I don't want to go spend time. It is CG, right? I mean, that was the proof of concept trailer down here. They didn't change it, right? This is just, like, them building it in a real space to see how light... It goes off it, I guess, or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't like. I don't want. I don't want to see a live action Deadpool. I want to see this Deadpool. I couldn't tell you. All right. You remember this Deadpool? Did you ever watch this? I did. It was good, right? No. Deadpool to what? me is like a kind the of a, a lame character, character, in my opinion. You, you think just... everybody's lame? No, that's not true. That's not true. Who do you like? Batman. You like Batman? I like Batman. You like Bane? I like Bane. I like Mister Freeze. I thought you were gonna give me some. Uh... I like. Uh... It's not CG, motherfucker. Really, I wanted the whole movie to be CG. God damn it. I don't like that at all. Okay. Now I'm upset now. You've ruined my day, internet, as usual. Greg, two more stories and then we'll move on.
to uh, give away something in our prize pack and then talk to our people in the comments. We love our people. Thank you for watching. Uh, IGN, Tom Regan, writes, uh, new Rise of the Tomb Raider gameplay details emerge. Um, and uh, we were talking about this game, I think earlier this week or maybe late last week, about the nature of the game in terms of is it a permanent Xbox exclusive? Yeah, or, the or confusion the over all this stuff, yeah. We're not going to have any answers to those questions anytime soon, I don't think, but uh, we have an answer to some questions. Uh, Tom Regan says, Rise of the Tomb Raider promises to have you fighting more realistic, in quotes, animals as you explore Siberia. But game director Brian Horton also hints that the game will still contain supernatural elements, in quotes. Uh, talking to Game Informer in a video interview, which is why I'm using the IGN thing, because the video interview I'm not going to mind. Uh, Horton revealed a plethora of new information about the game, announcing that it will feature dynamic time and day, and an adaptive weather system allowing different animals to appear at different times. The upgrade system from 2013's Tomb Raider is set to make a return, but will now allow players to upgrade multiple types of bows rather than a single bow from the previous game. Like its predecessor, traversal is set to remain a big part of Rise of the Tomb Raider, with Horton promising players an improved way to climb across mountains and other terrain. Traversal is not the only major new feature in Siberia. The team has also invested heavily in creating believable snow technology. Oh. Animals will leave unique footprints in the snow, which will fill over time, and Lara will be able to dig snow trenches to shelter herself. Although snow won't always be a useful <coughs> tool, as players will find themselves under threat from avalanches and snowstorms. Horton also reveals the first details of a new area outside snowy Siberia, the Oasis. Quote, it isn't completely permafrost. This oasis, which we're not going to get into a lot of detail about, just know that the w different weather, different temperatures are important to make sure we're going with one single look throughout the whole game. We're not going, rather. Um, and then he writes at the end, Square Enix's time exclusive will be revealed on Xbox 360 and Xbox One this year, with other platforms to be announced at a later date. Uh, so that's your Xbox One news for the day, Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm not seeing too much for, by way of Xbox One news, even on Xbox Wire. When I well, they put out iDarb, they got nothing else to say. Yeah, They're well, like, here you go, perfect game. What else to say? See you next time. Uh, final piece of news, Greg, is for a PlayStation exclusive um, that's coming out soon, and we might even get in the next couple days, which I'm very excited about. The Order 1886 dev talks controversial visual approach, PS4 power, and more. This is, again, by our friend Eddie. Eddie! Um, and, but this comes from uh, an interview, again, a video interview from Game Trailers. Um, He's and ripping people off? He says that in an interview, the Order 1886 creative de director, Ru Weira Surya, speaks in depth about the mixed reaction to the PlayStation 4 game's visual approach. How the title's only scratching the surface of the console's power and more, which is hard to believe. First, Weira Surya... Weira Surya now acknowledged to game trailers that the way in which the Order 1886 blends gameplay and cinematics might be somewhat mm. jarring for players, but it was important to take this approach so that the game would stand out. He explained, quote, Every time you try to tackle something new like that, people are going to be nervous, there's no doubt. I think even in the, the people in the public, the people who actually talked about the game, who write on forums and the bloggers and all that stuff, they do all express their concerns, and I think it's natural. It's some we accept, it's some we accept because we took the risk of trying to do something that was different. But the reality of it is that it is part of the game and one of the big things we want to tackle with this game. The kind of seamlessness. The constant question that you have to whether or not you're looking at it in a cinematic or you're playing the game. And we experienced that when we played the 40-minute segment at PlayStation Experience. Because there were times where I didn't know if I was controlling the character or not. Mm -hmm. You actually experienced that in the very beginning when you're climbing up the Zeppelin. Right, right, right. And right, I'm right. like, am I controlling this? And, what? and I even asked the question, why am I controlling this? Like, that was one of the things where I appreciate that they want to put things in your hands. It's very David Cage-like. But there are certain things where it's like, why am I playing this? Yeah. You know? Just climb up the fucking Zeppelin. You know what I mean? So there are there are. They weird... want, you want, it's like, uh, spoiler alert, everybody. Gary Wood is on the Game Over Greggy show, right? Uh, part of his topic that you can hear on Patreon.com slash kind of funny tonight, tomorrow, is uh, he talks to the, you know about making video games and the fact that you have to be giving players something to do, right? So do, uh, maybe they were getting, maybe they were worried about getting cinematic heavy, so they feel like they have to give you something. It's similar, I mean, I don't know, I think it's a cool moment when this happens. I always think back to Uncharted 3, when you're in the desert, and I remember there's that, like, big pan shot of Nathan's, like, standing on a hill, and I was watching it for a long time, uh, like, in the, you know, on a you know, sand dune or whatever, and I was like, oh, and then I hit the stick and he moved, and I was like, oh, and I had to make him walk across this thing, and I thought that was a cool thing. It kept yeah. me going, it kept it, me it, playing, I didn't check my phone, that's the big thing. Too many things are competing for your attention. I don't have to control it. I look at my phone. Portillo hops up. You're out there. Let me touch your head. Greg, please touch my hair. Yeah. Like, Ugh. Like, Greg, I love it when you run your hands through my hair. I don't even run it through your hair as much as I just... It's like an outer shell. It your is, hair is it, fascinating because it's like a helmet or something. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I got to shave it soon again. Oh. Um, we're just cut. I'm not you know, obviously shaving it much anymore. Um, so a few people have been talking about QTEs, about how uh, M400 says QTEs or quick time events are not gaming. Some people are like, this game has a ton of QTEs in it. I think, based on what I've seen and played, that is largely and heavily overblown. Now, whether or not the final game, however long it is, has a lot of QTEs in it, remains sure. to be seen. But that segment we played um, on the Zeppelin, which was literally... That was maybe one of the longest demos, if not the single longest demo I've ever had. Really? Yeah. 40 minutes? 
I like, 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 signed the new order for two hours. No, so, I, yeah, I am. But that's different. I mean, like The Witcher or something, when you go to a, a place and you play one game for three hours, but not. No, I've never I've never had a 40 minute demo in eight years anywhere I hear when they're surrounded by other games. You know I hear I mean? you. That, my, my, the Wolfenstein one was at PAX, but I digress. It was a very long demo. Yes, a PlayStation experience. Um, and. I QTE'd a few times in that game. I, yeah. I just don't understand this argument. Like you have to, you have to be consistent with this argument. If you don't like QTEs and you don't like God of War, if you don't like QTEs and you don't like Heavy Rain, if you don't, like, you know, so it's like that's fine if you don't like it. But like, let's not judge the game this harshly before we even know what the hell the nature of the game. That's is. That's the thing. If you remember a PlayStation Experience on Beyond, we were talking about how we liked the order, we enjoyed what we played, thought it had come a long way from when you first saw it. And Vince's concern, right, was the fact that every time we've played it, it seems like we're taught a new mechanic. And so is the whole game going to be that way where every scenario you're put in, you need a tutorial to explain what you're doing here? I hope not. I don't think it will be. But I felt like it was hard to knock it at that stage when you're getting the vertical slice. When they're dropping you into maybe two hours into the game and then you've part played other parts that are three hours. You know what I mean? Like you have to, there's going to be a rhythm when we actually get it and play it and I still can't wait. Uh, I'm excited too. Uh, we, we apparently are going to get it by you're sure. tomorrow. You're sure. That's what the word is. Okay. Now. I know who to beat up if we don't get it. Me too. You. No! I think it's your Come, we gotta stick together. You were trying to tear us apart today. Um, Greg? Yeah. That's all for the news today. Uh, you missed one. It came up in the chat. The new oh. Spider-Man uh, actor's been announced. Oh, I didn't see that. It's a joke. This kid oh. sent this in with Portillo being... Portillo's gonna be Spider-Man. But he got me excited to think that there was really gonna be a Spider-Man actor, so I felt like I had to... Tobey Maguire. Open it. Tobey Maguire should come back. I'm Spider-Man and I'm 40 years old. So what are we giving away... So far? Today. Alright. So, so far... Oh, hold on, everybody. Remember... This is Colin and Greg live each and every day here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We come at you with the news of the day, 11 a.m., and we add a new prize to the prize pack each and every day before we give away the prize pack on Friday. If you're a subscriber, you get cool emoticons, you get ch chat time with us. One day you'll be able to play games with us when we have time, but you also automatically get entered to win the prize pack on Friday, or you just have to be in the chat, because then we put everybody together and we pull a name and somebody wins. So, so far, we added the Mega Blaster. I, I inflated it. Mm -hmm. My lips have been on it. My arm has been in it. I think Colin has had something else in it. We added the State of Decay shirt here. The Xbox One game we can't wait. One Year Survival Edition. Yep. That was yesterday. And then, on day one, we had the Takaiden mask. Yep. They gave it to you when they came here from Japan. Yes. Now, we're going to add something else, Kyle. I'm grabbing this thing. Do you know what this is? Is this something you put in here? I don't know what oh, this yeah, is. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I actually... Is it a good one or no? Yeah, but you need more. There's more to it than that. Oh. Um, what else is in there? Bring, bring the box over if you can. All right, we're adding this book that is more than just a book, and then we're going through the prize box. This is, this is not a book, that's why we're, we're going through the prize box to find the rest. It's heavy. There's there's more to it. There's more to it than this, right? And I don't know if we're gonna be able to give it away. Because... I right, grab something else then. Hold on. Tur can you turn the box towards me, please? Thank you. Turn the box. This is where all the stuff lives that you win one day. Yes. Okay. Got it. So. Let me just, I want to just, before you, I want to just uh, look something up. Okay. I can still To make time. sure that I know where I got this from. Yeah, okay, this is it. All right, so, this is a really, really random thing here. And okay. I don't, I, you don't, I, and it's called The Danger Game. Okay. It's a board game. And this was given to me, I don't remember where I got this from. But I'm going to tell you who made it in a minute. This is the board for it. Okay, so it's a board. So it's a board game, very rare board game. Indeed, it's an Icelandic board game. Oh, made by CCP, the guys who do Eve Online and uh, and Dust Five One Four. They made a board game. Yes, um, it it's called in in Iceland. It's called Hatsupal, I think it says it right, it's right, right there. there. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking up at Board Game Geek. It has a six point three out of ten with eight reviews. Because I'm not sure of the rules of the game. So it says, um, in Danger Game, the player takes on the role of a young person and his or her object is to collect the 25 points needed to win. Collecting points is done by buying items according to each person's interest. The points can be lost as well. For example, if the player gets a drug card. So basically, it's just a, it's, it's just a random game. Um, sure. And it random was, board game for the guys who made It was created by the founders of CCP to finance the beginning of the EVE Online project. That's awesome. What a fascinating, cool thing. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's so this game history. was made by CCP to fund EVE Online, which ended up being their runaway success MMO that still exists today. Um, so this is a kind of a cool little thing, and I think I, I, I'm, you know, I'm friendly with the guys over at CCP, and I think that one of them gave me this, or maybe our friend Sean Norton gave me this, who represents sure, them, sure, the sure, PR sure, guy. Sure, sure, sure. I got this from someone somewhere at some point, uh, and now it's going to be one of yours. And now it's yours! Hooray! Hooray! Cool. That's it. 
That's a good one. I yeah. like that. That's a nice. That's a, I like that there's a story to it. You know what I mean? I like that there's a story. There is. Huh? There is a story to it. Absolutely. <sighs> now, Gregory? Yeah. Let's uh, speak for a few minutes to our friends in the chat. Now, I like that you say that. Mm -hmm. Because something appears to be wrong with this chat. Is it not moving anymore? We were ch yeah, see something happened. The, the chat has gone down. This is a Twitch problem, not a Greg Miller problem. I know it'll be reflected on me, as always. We're already at zero days anyway. I know, it doesn't matter, so whatever. It's at zero. But yeah, something's wrong with the chat here. Did you re Are you reconnecting yours? Yeah, I wonder if it's our... Is, it's not our internet, is it? I don't want to put anything past anybody on when it comes to our internet. But I see that we're still ha we still have the internet. I think uh, Twitch had problems yesterday, remember. Subchat oh, won't work at all. We're still broadcasting here. Okay. Breaking this out. Popping that out. Mm -hmm. Popping it like it's hot and stuff. Mm. You're having trouble loading, though. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably in the internet limbo between the two. Like, this this room is, like, between two sources. Of yeah, internet. it sucks. Um, it also says there that we're offline, doesn't it? Nope. says we have zero viewers, but that alternates all the time. Oh, okay. This is trying to give us something, so it's something's going on. So then maybe we just need to wrap it up. We, I mean, why? If anybody's even seeing this. I don't know. Are we broadcasting to you? Do you hear us? Let's, I'm going to go through the Twitch app. It doesn't have archives. It seems like Twitch is just down. Oh, no. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Oh, we're so stupid. Yeah, it looks like Twitch is just dead. Hopping on. Right, games is working, of course. Pfft. Bunch of cowards. Won't fight on us. So, does it look like the... Does it look like the... Oh, they still see us. We're still here. Oh, we're here. So you can it's, see it on there. I can see our chat here. The chat is not working locally. But the chat is it's it running on like, there. All right, so the browser's not working. All right, so wait. Are we good? Are we okay? Well, I mean, people see us. They see and hear us. We, sh oh, we didn't make out. So we didn't do that part of the, the plan. That should be the plan now. Whenever we think we're off the air, we start making out. See what happens. Oh, yeah. oh Billy. Billy. What is that from? Oh, it's, isn't that, that's, uh, that's Jim Carrey. Oh, we're back, we're back. Or whatever happened, happened. Whatever. That's Jim Carrey, right? Yeah, yeah like I so. I, so did, Weird hiccup. I'm wondering if was that a problem for just us? I don't know. Just maybe the browser. People maybe? are saying it's back, so we must have been off at least some point. Oh, okay. Oh, but they're they're blaming Twitch. It looks like yeah, Twi Twitch did go down. Okay. Well, I don't know. Let us know, ladies and gentlemen. Was it just us or was it somebody else? All right, I'm going to slow mode. Cable guy. Yeah, they're all saying cable guy. All right, Cable Guy, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that movie in... I haven't seen that movie in forever. I just remember that from the, the trailer and the commercials. Like, they would just show that, oh, Billy, like... Yeah, 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 over right. and over and over again. Um, uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we this is one of our Patreon milestones for Kind of Funny Games. Monday, I will be streaming... I will start a marathon of the seasons one and two of The Walking Dead, starting right after Colin and Greg Live that day. And then, <laughs> until it's over. We love you. Now, some people are saying they saw us the whole time, so... Well, well who, who... Whatever. Who I'm happy you're getting the experience you guys want. And that's why I'll dance. All right, Greg. Yeah. Uh, subs only. Nope. No. 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 This is just the chat. Yeah. This is just the chat. Yeah, chat. Let's, not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, Shinra's finest says you need to, which is a great name by the way. You need to put crap from the street in that box. <laughs> you don't want anything from the streets of San Francisco in that box. Yeah, have you ever been here before? Let you me assure you. That. You don't want the bed, the bed bugs coming back to you. The old lice. The homeless guy, Portillo. Um, Zman0069 says, Colin. Thanks, Amy. Uh, he says, who is the uh, best drummer uh, of all time? Um, and I, I, a lot of people ask me this question when I play the drums, Greg. And a lot of yeah. people ask me. And you say me. And I say I'm the best drummer yeah. of all time. But a lot of people ask me this, and I really don't think that there is a, there is a, it's all, it's all kind of just subjective, right? Thanks, Big Curse. Um, my favorite drummers of all time are like Chad Sexton. And uh, Louis Armstrong, Neil Pert, Louis Armstrong, the great, the great drummer. And I want to bring. Um, oh, I guess I'm not on. Um, <laughs> You're not connected. Yeah. The, so what do you want me to find for you? No, that's fine. Stu uh, Stuart Copeland, who is one of my, one of my favorite drummers, if not my single favorite drummer um, from the Police, whatever. But I just wanted. To, I was just gonna bring up a, a picture of him because he just lo he looks kind of doofy in his old age. Yeah. Um, Good for him. Live it up, Stuart Copeland. So that's the answer to that question. All right, good. I'm glad we answered uh, that question. Let's see. Crispy N64 says, do you feel safe walking alone on the streets of San Francisco? I yeah. do. With the exception of around Civic Center and, like, the Tenderloin. Yeah. You might get killed in those places. But other sure. than that, San Francisco re seems relatively safe to me. Yeah, and we're also, we're also big, scary dudes. One time I had a guy, I, I was crossing, I was coming home 
and this guy, I was crossing the street here and I had headphones on. This, these two guys were coming this way. So I'm coming this way and they're coming this way. So I'm walking pa- like across their thing. And they were drunk and I heard them start talking louder. And I, I was like, maybe it's at me. I don't care, whatever. Oh, and I, and I, and I, and then I turned the corner. And as I turned around, I looked over my shoulder. And one of them was like right behind me, but turning backwards. Like he had been, he had broken away from the other guy to come talk shit to me or something. And then he, when I wasn't acknowledging, we finally turned. You're gonna around. have to knock a dude out. I was gonna have to fucking kill somebody right here in San Francisco. Then I would have been. It would have been like Con Air too. Uh, D Strook says, Colin, have you seen the new Shonen Jump scans for Final Fantasy 15 demo? The lighting looks amazing. You're excited for the Final Fantasy 15 demo. I have not seen that stuff yet. Um, I'm really kind of in a wait and see approach to Final Fantasy 15. Personally, you're, you're just waiting for Persona 5. How many times can you be scorned by Square before you? I don't learn? know. You're, you're gonna find out. But you you've learned though. Uh, I've learned, which is why I just have no expectations. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, that's not a very nice thing to say. Uh, what do they say? Block them. No, no, no. This is just inappropriate. It's <laughs> just inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> Stee Hardly Working says, what five cities around the world would you guys like to visit is kind of funny. It's like on a tour? Yeah. I'd want to go to London. I'd want to do a Chicago tour. I'd want to do a New York one. Um... I, 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 LA is going to happen no matter what. So that doesn't seem to make sense. I'd like to go to Tokyo. I mean, t- kind of funny in Tokyo. That'd be amazing. Yeah, we wouldn't really draw anyone there, but, the, but it'd be fun to just go there. We can go there film video stuff. Yeah. Or just hang out and eat ramen. And the fifth city, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Because it's random. Uh, that is random. Where do you Although live? not so random anymore, right? Isn't Albuquerque where um, Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad was yeah, from? Yeah, but I don't know if that is enough to go there. Well, that's a good, that's a good list of cities. I'm totally fine You're with You're fine with those cities? Yeah. All right, that'll be the tour. Uh, yeah, so actually someone says, uh, Sumanigan says, dude, Toronto, that's actually a great, great, yeah, uh, that's Toronto a good one. Is, uh, a good one to go Remember, to. I'm going to Vancouver, one week, charity live stream, come hang out and watch me. If you're not going to be there, you can watch it online at gameandwatchlive.com. Go here, watch me, I'll be playing Mario Kart 64 with a bunch of idiots. Victor Lucas is going to be there, I'm going to crush him. Electric Playground, get the fuck out of here. You don't even I know I have Lucas. a bad feeling about your performance in this particular, uh. In this particular you can area. donate now, and you can donate in my name. I think I was supposed to tell people to do that, so do that, so that we help the Children's Hospital of British Columbia. Uh, Z Sector Zero Zero says, "What if I sponsor you here to Dubai? Hey, if you want to pay us to go to Dubai, we'll go to Dubai. Sure. Um, we got to go to that IGN convention. <clears throat> yeah, they do. They do have one there, and they want us to come for real. Um, I would totally go to Dubai. All right, so. cool. There you have it. We're going to Dubai. Nick, we're going to Dubai. Okay. Nick says, okay." supposed to be a very luxurious you we can do like a walking tour of like this is the scene from spec ops when this happened and over here this is that's that building and that's where the guy was crazy uh let's see let's do two more questions and then we'll go to sub only chat um let's see let's see let's see, let's see. oh that's not very nice g shark loves says toronto is the worst canadian city no it's not that's not the worst canadian city you think what's you the worst think- canadian city I don't know. They got a bunch of funny named ones. Yellow Knife. Yeah, there's one of them. Yellow Knife is the worst. Um, you can't... Oh, Anima, Anima Age says you can't drink in Dubai. I don't know if I want to go to Dubai. Nah, fuck Never mind. Dubai. Nope, we're not going to Dubai. If I can't drink somewhere, I ain't going there. That's weird. You can't drink in a whole city. I guess not. Um, <coughs> someone says... Nutty McCluddy says, will you come to Fan Expo? That's the one in Toronto. We'd like to. Have them reach out to us and talk about how that happens. We are going to a lot of conventions, and most of the ones that we're going to, we are going as guests of the convention, because we don't have much money to throw around. Please subscribe. Uh, one more question. Uh, well, a lot of people have been saying this to me. Cruel Peter says, Colin, you need to watch more anime. Just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen, Greg. There's only so many hours in the day. I don't have time. Right. I don't have any time for more interests. There's some great anime. I used to watch anime when I was a kid, but Bubblegum Crisis and Ranma Half and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Just not, not in the cards anymore. Got to play games. You got to stream. You got to do the Facebook post for us. You got to do all the other social media. You got to go out there and do other videos with us. You got to 